Hey everybody, my name is Curtis of Guppies Power Sports here in Grapevine, Texas. Thank you for tuning in today. Today is going to be my day before my surgery tomorrow on my shoulder. Tomorrow I'll get my, my left shoulder operated on. Uh, for you guys who don't know it, and this is you watching the first time, I fell on the ice about a little bit over a month ago and I tore up my rotator cuff, I tore my bicep, I tore some of my chest muscle here and my back muscle. Don't know all the real technical terms of it. In other words, I fell and hurt myself really good. All I heard was the terms when I heard acute rupture of my rotator cup, I knew I was in trouble. And the doctor recommended surgery. So I'm scheduled to get my operation tomorrow morning. Got to be there at 7.15. What I had planned on originally doing was taking, originally, do the video in the morning before I go there. And I planned on setting up a GoPro or, or a video of me driving there doing time lapse. Well, I'm not going to be able to do it. It's going to be dark when we're heading there. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do it today, tell you a little bit about what I'm expecting, what my doctors told me to do to prepare, just to help you if you're fixing to go through the same procedure that you kind of see what my doctor told me to expect and what to do. He gave me a whole bunch of things to do prior to it. So I just wanted to get this information out to you. Well, about two weeks ago, actually about two days ago, I put a video on of a Bragg Polar Care Cube that I'm going to be using that's part of my getting ready for having the surgery is you want to put ice on it and maintain it but I did that video I'll put it in the link below so you can click on it and watch it and see how that thing's supposed to help you I think it's gonna be awesome I've used it because my shoulder still bothers me right now until I get it operated on it still bother me so I've been using it the last couple days it seems to work really great it really cools down your shoulder real good, removes inflammation really well. I think it's going to help me recover faster than I did the last time because last time I put ice on there and it really hurt. But you could watch that video and get all the details. So they gave me all this stuff, paperwork. So I'm going to go through it because I don't remember it all. Um, what I have going on, it says that what I'm going to go through is a shoulder arthroscopy. It involves the use of a camera to fix my shoulder problems in other words a very minimal invasive they do a couple little cuts they pour put some fluids in there spread the joint out go in there and hopefully get repair all this stuff through that way if not they may have to cut it give me a cut uh, and, and repair all the joint and stuff they did that on my right shoulder uh, when I had it done they took and I got an incision that was this long and I'll tell you that was very painful to get over it was a pretty tough surgery it took about a year to get where I had full range of motion and I could use my shoulder again the basic procedure, this is an outpatient procedure. I'm going to check in at 7.50 in the morning. About two hours later, I should have the surgery. And they said, normally the procedure takes about 45 minutes. Well, he said, there's so much damage to my shoulder. It may take about an hour and a half. And he may have to put a cut down here on my arm to get the tendon for my bicep to get that back up there. Um, and get the tendon to attach up here. So... It's, it, it may be pretty a little bit more serious than just go in and do a thing. I may have a few big cuts on me, but hey, at the end of the day, I'm getting my shoulder fixed. I'm happy. I'm excited about doing it. I have no anxiety going forward getting it because I've been through it before. I just know the recovery is not fun. It says, and like I said, during the surgery, they're going to give a couple small incisions that's made around my shoulder to allow the insertion of the camera and their instruments that they're using to repair it and the tools and stuff. Occasionally, one of these decisions may be kind of long because they got to get in there a little bit deeper. But whatever they got to do, I'm good with whatever they got to do. Fix my shoulder, I'll be happy it's fixed. Sometimes there are fewer additional procedures that need to be performed outside of what was expected. They won't know until they really get in there. So they gave me some things that I need to do prior to going there. We had a pre-op operative appointment, and based on that, they explained what the surgery was going to be. I had to sign some consent forms. I had to pay ahead and pay in, in advance. Uh, sometimes the hospital requires a pre-op visit. I didn't require it. And they don't require special scrub and stuff for this surgery. They do require me to take and use a scrub three days prior, which I've been doing. They expect me to wash, wash my shoulder with this special scrub. I'm using what's called, I think it's Cer CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. And I got to clean the area like that. Like I cleaned last night with it. I'm going to clean tonight with it. And in the morning, I got to clean. They want me to wash my shoulder, my arm, my armpit, my neck, all my side here in the back, my back shoulder area. 
any place that they might be sticking and cutting and they want that really clean and it's to help to cure, kill the bacteria prior to the surgery. They didn't have me do that last time. They just went in, they shaved the area and they did the surgery. Uh, a little different this time. So there's a lot of things different from the 2003 surgery versus this operation that I'm gonna go through. They say we'll receive a dose of antibiotics just prior to the surgery through an IV before they put me out. Then they're gonna put me out and they're gonna do the procedure. Now, after the, after the surgery, what they've done, which is really nice, they didn't do this to me last time. Last time I had the surgery, they took in a, a, sent me home with a prescription in my hand. So I had to give my wife, we got home very late. My wife had to go the next morning to get my prescription. So all through the whole night, I went without pain meds. That was pretty painful. But this time it's nice. They write the prescription in your pre-optive appointment. So you get your prescriptions in hand. So as soon as you get home after the surgery, they're going to do a nerve block, which is nice. They said for the first 24 hours, my shoulder may feel great. I may not feel any pain at all. It could be 24 to 48 hours. My shoulder may not have any pain at all, but they still want me to put ice on it. And they want me to take my, uh, my pain pills and they want me to take a anti-nausea medicine because sometimes anesthesia and pain will cause people to have vomit. And it's really hard to be heaving when you're hurting and it's more painful and you can take and rip up what they just fixed. They don't want you getting sick. And they want me also to be taking ibuprofen, 800 milligrams every four to six hours for the first two weeks, every four to six hours. That means wake up at the night and take it. So they're really trying to beat the inflammation down to help your recovery process. Um, they want to know if you have, of course, if you have any, any, uh, if you have any uh, allergic reactions to medicine, they want to know. So they make sure they get you on the right medicine. And of course the pain medication they say is as needed, but they really want you to get home. They instructed me when you get home, please start taking your pain medicine, take the anti-nausea medicine and the ibuprofen, uh, take it right as soon as you get home and then take it every four to six hours, uh, for at least the first three, four days to get through that initial because when that nerve block wears off, that's when the pain's going to start. I remember the pain I had last time. It was pretty intense pain. It was very intense pain. It was pretty uncomfortable. So they want me to do that and they want me to put ice on it constantly. If I could have the ice on there 24 hours a day, that's what they want. I think with that pad on there, I could have it on there for a couple hours, pretty strong. And then I'll probably have to take a break. Every once in a while, they want you to check the skin, make sure you don't have no problems with discoloration of skin, any frostbite. You put that pad on, make sure you got a shirt or something underneath it. And that's really going to help me recover. This is the things they told me to wear prior to going to surgery. Something loose and comfortable should be available to wear after the surgery. So when I get there, I'm going to have comfortable pants on. I'm going to have a really, a little bit extra. They recommended uh, getting a little bit, I wear two X shirts. I'm a pretty big guy, but I got a three X shirt. It's bigger, going to be a little bit looser, more comfortable on my shoulders. So it's not putting a lot of pressure because I'm going I'm to have some uh, uh, band-aids and stuff, uh, some sutures and stuff on here. And they're going to have some gauze and pads up on there. So I'll need a little bit bigger shirt to wear. Uh, when I get in for the surgery, they're going to take all my street clothes off, put a robe on, uh, and I'm going to have to just wear my underwear in a robe uh, that they gave you, the really nice hospital gown. I'm really looking forward to that. Yay! But anyways, doing that, then the nurses and therapists in the hospital will help me and show me exactly what I need to do without using my sh surgical arm after the procedure. They'll explain that, they'll explain the, the sling I'm gonna wear, it's got a pad on it. Uh, they recommended that I'll have a sling with your shoulder with a pillow attached to it. There's secondary straps that wraps this around your body and holds it secure against your body because they do not want it to move at all. They don't want your shoulder to be hanging on it. They want it to be elevated so there's no weight being pulled on that joint that they just repaired up there. They don't want no weight pulling on it. This the you got to set it up where it's comfortable and it's fully adjustable. It can be worn as high or as low as you like, but it's meant to hold your arm so that you do not have constantly hold it up. So I'm not holding my arm up. The sling is holding up. I can rest it in that sling. The strap that wraps around it keeps your arm close to your body and holds it in position. So you can maintain comfort and keep it in the spot so it doesn't move a lot and cause you pain. So that's the sling. Prior to leaving the hospital, the nursing staff or therapist will show me how to adjust the sling and how to take it on and off because when you, when you go take a shower and stuff a few days later, you're going to be able to take it off. The sling should not be worn at times except when, at all times, except for when performing the, the exercises that they're going to want me to do uh, after the operation. 
And for, of course, hygiene, for cleaning myself and stuff. I'll have to clean my armpits and stuff. I'll have to take the sling off and clean myself, right? Expect to be, they say, I should expect to be in that sling four to six weeks. At the first post-op appointment, I'm going to go to, it's about two weeks after the surgery. They'll rem remove the pillow and I'll just have the sling. I'm looking forward to that because that means I'll be able to move a little bit probably. Okay. Now, of course, like I told you, I'm going to have dressings and stuff on there, and I'm going to have some wounds up here from what it is. They give me some instructions already. And, of course, they're going to go over this more again probably tomorrow in the hospital, but they gave it to me in my uh, pre-op meeting. So that surgery, I'll have a large bulky dress on my shoulder, I told you. This will cover all the small incisions uh, that were created around my shoulder. If they got to cut down here, I'm sure I'll have it down here too. Uh, the dressing will remain in place until the third day after surgery. Then I can remove the dressing. I'm having my surgery Friday. So three days will be, be uh, Saturday, Sunday. Monday is probably when I can pull the dressing off. Uh, I'll take it down. There'll be stereo strips on my shoulder. They want me to leave them on until I go to my, until my follow-up appointment. Once the bulky dressing off, I could take a shower and let water run over the shoulder, but I cannot scrub that area or use soap over this area. Just let water go over it. I can, and then I use a, a towel to gently pat it dry because if the sutures, in, it's going to have sutures in it and stitches. They don't want me to tear that up either. I do not need to replace any dressing after that or apply any lotions or ointments or anything like that. Uh, I may see some suture at the ends or incisions. It looks like clear fishing line, I said. This is absolutely normal and we'll, they'll remove it at the post-op appointment. They don't want a submerging or incision at all for the first three weeks. So no baths, no pools, no hot tubs, nothing like that. So I'll be staying away from that. I'll be just taking a shower and, like I said, lightly dribbling water over it and not cleaning it and scrubbing it real hard, uh, but cleaning it. Like I told you, they're talking now about pain block in this. They're going to give me a pain block. It's going gonna, it's gonna to deaden the nerve in my shoulder, so I shouldn't have any pain. For the, They say pain rel relief. They want me to start pr pain relief right away. Uh, because a block provides really good pain relief for the first 12 to 24, maybe to 48 hours, sometimes it even lasts three days. But when it wears off, that pain is going to come on. Okay? They say as soon as I start feeling my fingers, that means the block is starting to wear off. Because I won't feel nothing. My arm may be numb, and totally numb, and not feel nothing on there. They say some patients really complain about that. And, of course, I'll let you know how that goes. So they want me to start taking pain medication as soon as I can. So that way it comes in. I don't go through all that pain that comes with that. And they definitely want me to make sure I have pain medication within 30 minutes of starting to feel my fingers. Because that means the medication is wearing off. And they say sometimes you can have that residual numbness in your hand for two weeks or more even after the block. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping after the block all that comes back. Okay, and believe it or not, they give me physical, immediately following the surgery therapy will consist of only a few exercises a day. These will be taught to you and explained by the nurses prior to leaving the hospital. You need to remove the shoulder sling three times per day to work on the exercises. The one's going to be elbow range of motion. It's going to gently move my elbow through its entire range of motion all the way straight and completely flexed five times. This may be done slowly, and you may use your other arm to help you if you can't do it, if you don't have the strength to do it. It will get quite stiff if these exercises are not done every day. So they highly recommend that. I'll help the therapy later on. Then they're going to give me shoulder pendulum exercises to do. To do these, I'm simply going to leave forward with my right hand on a table, hang my, my left arm down, and just do circles. Five circles. It says, do these is simply lean forward on the table or countertop and allow the operative arm, which is my left arm, to dangle, relax, and everything in your shoulder and neck, then slowly and gently start moving it back and forth, then side to side, then around in a circle. Your arm swing should swing gently like a pendulum. This will help to keep your shoulder loose while we are allowing the repair area to heal. After our first post-op appointment, we'll order some formal outpatient uh, therapy. The, another prescription will be given to me. And we'll have physical therapy in their office uh, probably a few times a week to accommodate whatever I need. Now, I say the biggest thing about it is going to be sleeping. They said sleeping is pretty tough for people who have shoulder surgery. And I remember that from the first one. I could not lay on a bed for weeks. Because when you lay down, 
your shoulders fall back and it is extremely, extremely painful. So what I'm, I've done is I've got a recliner that a friend gave me back when I had my first surgery and I still have it here and that's what I'm gonna be sitting in is that recliner or I got another recliner that's on the end of a really nice leather sofa. That's probably gonna be the one because it doesn't rock. It'll be easier for me to get up because the rocking sofa was kind of hard with me getting up. When I had this one, 2003, think about it. I was 20 years younger than I am now. So it was a little bit easier for me to get up. So I'm gonna be probably using that. And if it's not comfortable, I'll move to that one. And they say you could set up pillows and stuff or buy a, buy a wedge to put on the bed and kind of, if you can make it, prop yourself up, make yourself comfortable. Uh, they, but they highly recommend to sleep in a chair or recliner or in a bed propped up with pillows. Lying flat will not damage what they repaired, but it does tend to be pretty uncomfortable. They said you can. If you're comfortable, go ahead. I remember the last surgery. There was no way I could do that. It was way too much. I could lay down for a few minutes, and the pain was just in too intense. I had to get up. I, there's no way I'm going to fall asleep or like that. Remember that you not sleep on your operative side for at least six weeks. And I'm a side sleeper, so I got to be really careful about that when I eventually do work myself when I start having less pain and I can finally sleep in the bed because and I'll roll over on my side and not even know it. So I'm worried about that. So I may be sleeping in that recliner for at least two weeks, maybe to four weeks. We'll see how it goes. Now they, they want to give you warnings, of course, what your arm might look pro right after the surgery. The shoulder can swell significantly after the procedure. They're pumping a bunch of fluids in the shoulder in order to, to improve their visualization, their visualization. For the procedure, your body absorbs some of these fluids. Your shoulder may be significantly larger than on the other side for a day, hence the bigger, looser shirt they want you to wear. You could also experience swelling down your whole entire arm. I know last time they put a, 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 a pump on my shoulder that put medication there, and my finger with that pump on swelled up bigger than sausages. It was unbelievable. My hand, I couldn't even move my fingers and bend them. Nurse came in. The night nurse came in to see what was going on and she panicked and she pulled that thing out because she knew what was going on. Get that off of there. But anyway, so they don't use that pump no more. So I'm not even worried about that. All I remember is that hurt, excruciating pain. My arm was hurting so bad. I was on so much morphine. I can tell you this, that, uh, that I was seeing foghorn, leghorn. Nurses turn in foghorn, leghorn. I, I don't do good on morphine. So I hope I don't have to have, take much morphine. With that being said, they could have, I could have bruising down my chest, on my back, on my shoulder, all the way down my arm. It really depends. It usually stays localized to the bicep and the shoulder area, but it could, it could, it could be significant and it could be scary looking, but it's the natural healing. My body's going to heal. Uh, recovery process. They expect recovery on this shoulder operation to be five months. It will be at least five months before I'm released to full activities, depending on how I progress. It could be longer. As long as I follow the home exercises, the therapies, and do the right thing, I, they said I could be back in five months, which that's a long time. But I'll I'll be I'll be right when it comes. I'll be ready for sure. They don't want us reaching overhead or lifting more than five pounds for the first twelve weeks. For three months, I can't lift more than five pounds at all with this arm. That's not much. Twelve weeks. That's three months. At 12 weeks, will fall, allow us, me to lift 10 to 15 pounds. This will coincide with working on heavy lifting and physical therapy. In other words, I'll go home, I can lift 10 to 15 pounds, but no more than that. So it's going to be pretty much a five weeks of pretty intense therapy. And this is the physical therapy. The first two weeks, they're going to give me the shoulder pendulums and the, the range of motion on my bicep. The second, two to six weeks, it'll be the form of outpatient therapy. Because the three, two to three times a week be working a range of motion exercises. The therapist will dictate what exercise to work on at home. You will, you will not do any weights or bands until the next phase. At the sixth week, I could be strengthened with physical therapy once I've regained my motion. Stretching the range of motion exercises will still be done in addition to new strengthening exercise. The physical therapist will dictate what exercise again to work on at home. 12 to five weeks is basically gonna continue building strength. Formal therapy may still be needed at this point. Depends on how your progress is going. At five months to a year, I should expect to be full activity and fully returned. We recommend that you continue work on stretching and strengthening exercise for a few time of weeks for the first year. And they want me to make sure I make my appointments and be there on time and stuff like that. 
Now, of course, they tell you when to call the office if there's problems. Of course, my doctor's really good about this. If you've got a question, you can call their office, their nurse. They're very busy. They generally will get back to you within a couple hours and answer any questions. Unless it's an emergency, they'll get back to you pretty quick. I'm very impressed so far with this office and the doctor. I think he's awesome. He's got a lot of great reviews. I'm excited to have him fix me. I'm glad that's how I didn't go looking for him. This is just what my insurance sent me to. And I'm excited. He's really, I think he's really awesome. I think I was very blessed in having him. If you're going to be an outside physical therapist, they can call with questions about your protocol on your behalf. If my incisions start to look questionable, in other words, they turn redness, I start getting drainage, real bad swollen out of it, new bruising that wasn't there. Sorry, I had a little technical difficulty there. For some reason, my camera just all of a sudden, just out of blue, quit recording. My audio was going separately, so I had all the audio, and I was like, what happened in the video there? But the video quit for some reason. Got it back up running, so let me go ahead and continue on with it is. It won't be much longer. I know this is pretty long. But like I said, they want us to call us the office if certain things happen. Like I said about the shoulder and oozing, oozing, uh, the sutures start oozing, starts bruising, start getting really painful, stinking, stuff like that. To go ahead and give them a call. Another reason why they would want me to call them is if I fall or something, or if I if uh, if I drop something. That's another thing that people wind up hurting their shoulders with a lot is they drop something, and they move quick, try to catch it, and they hurt their shoulder. So if, if I have any severe pain from anything like that, they want me to notify them right away. They'll probably bring me in, get another x-ray, MRI, just to make sure everything is still good. Because the first time they operate, you're, you got a really good chance of full recovery. Second time, not so good. If they got to go back in a third time, it's really not a good outcome generally. With that being said, that is all the post-op, pre-op information I have for you. And I know it's kind of long, but there's a lot of things that we need to do to get ready before that same thing, figure out your meal plan and get meal planning ready. Uh, I got an awesome wife who's gonna help me for, she took a few days off of work, which is gonna be a great assistant. So we've done some meal planning. We've cleaned the house. We've figured out where I'm gonna sit, how I'm gonna get up, all that stuff. We had to take in consideration, try to make it easier for when we come home tomorrow after the surgery. But tomorrow after I come home from the surgery, if I'm feeling up to it and okay, I'll probably make a video just to let you guys know, hey, I'm out of surgery. The doctor said it went good. Uh, because I'm, I'm trusting that he's going to say that. He's going to report it because I really got a lot of trust and faith in this doctor that he's going to do a great job. So I'm going to come home. Hopefully I won't have enough pain. I can just turn on my, I got my setup here. I just come in, turn around and say, hey, hey guys, I just got home from surgery. I'm doing good. I'm a little tired. Uh, I'll let you know tomorrow, and then I'm planning on recording the second day, hopefully the third day, then I'll probably skip a day or two, then go the seventh day maybe, then 10 days out, two weeks out, three weeks out, four weeks out, a month out, two months out, three months out, and kind of give you updates. So if you've never been through this and you're thinking about going through this, you got an idea of what you might go through. Uh, I might have an easy time compared to you, or you might have a e better time for me, but hopefully this gives you some idea and helps you all. Because I would have liked to have known prior to me having this surgery um, the first time. I would have liked to have listened to something like this and maybe figured out what I was probably going to go through. With that being said, if you would like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. If you want to see my day two, my third day and all that, definitely hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified as soon as it comes out, definitely hit the bell button. So it rings you and lets you know, hey, the video came out. I appreciate you all watching this. I'm sorry it's not a power sport video or about my photography business. You know, I got two YouTube channels. I got Guppy's Power Sports and Curtis Landry Photography. That's why when you see the subscribe button, it said Curtis Landry Photography. Uh, I needed, I needed, I haven't had time. I need to make one for my Guppy's Power Sports. But with that being said, I'm sorry I ain't making videos on that for a little while. I'll get back to them, but just be patient with me. I just want to help people out who may be going through the same problem. To all you power sport riders out there, get out there, do me a favor, ride hard, but ride safe. To all you photographers, do me a favor, get your camera out, take some pictures. Thanks, guys. Bye.